The Bible says, I will read, I want us to read John chapter 2 together with Hebrews chapter 11, verses 3 and 4. Uh, the Bible says that, and, and, and the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of and the mother of Jesus was there. And then it says in verses 2, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And verses 3, it says, uh, and when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Thy hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Now, I want us to talk about what I call the law of provocation. I want to teach you how to make things happen or how to cause things to happen even when it was not the time for them to happen. Because you'll realize Jesus tells the mother, it's not my work. It's not my time. Anyway, what happened? What happened? Jesus tells the mother, it is not my time. Why are you asking me to do what I'm not supposed to do when you are asking me to do it? In other words, in the mind of God, there was a specific time when God had appointed that Jesus should begin to do the miraculous. And this was not the time. And that's why Jesus says, Mary, woman, what have I, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. In other words, the appointed time for me to do what you are asking me to do is not yet. In other words, why are you provoking me? Why are you asking me to do now what I'm not supposed or what I'm not ordained or appointed to do now? It's called the law of provocation. This woman Mary understood, knew how to cause things to happen even when it was out of time. Praise God. Even when it was out of time. Even when it was before time. I've said here before that the reason why many of us things are never changing is because sometimes we come too late into things huh? or we come too early into things. Huh? We don't know how to come into things at the right time. That's why we had a man at the pool of Bathsheba for how many years? For 38 years. Every day he came what? He came late. Every season he came late. Every season he came late. For 38 years this man missed God. And yet God was present every season for him to be healed. And yet for 38 good years this man kept coming late. He kept coming late. In other words, there is always a man who entered the waters earlier or faster than him. But is it not interesting? Come on. Is it not interesting that this time he still came what? He still came last, but what happened? But he was healed. This time he still came last, but he was healed. What changed? What is this thing that changed that caused this man who always came last to be healed even though he came last? In other words, it was never about who comes early or who comes last. It was about understanding how to make things happen, whether in time or out of time. And that's why scripture says that we, men of God, must always be prepared in and what? And out of season. There is no time, listen, you can wake me up anytime in the morning or in the night and ask me to preach and I say I'm not prepared to preach. Why? Because I have learned to do what? I have learned to be prepared what? In season and out of season, when I am low, when I am high, it doesn't matter. I know how because I have known how. This woman Mary must have known how to make things happen 
before the time appointed for them to happen. And that's why he comes to Jesus and he says, these men are without wine. And Jesus says, my time is not. And he tells, listen, he doesn't answer Jesus, right? He doesn't answer Jesus. He turns to the servants and he tells them, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. He didn't have time to argue the mother. No. He knew the man will do it. Only if the man is provoked to do it, he knew the man will do it. So he turns to the servant and says, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. You do it. It's called the law of provocation. How do we provoke? How do you provoke things to happen? Listen, and listen, if you understand this today, you will leave church today and you will do something and everything about you will change. Everything about you could change. Listen, you don't need, I've said this before, the Bible said to God, a thousand years is like a what? It's like a day. Listen, it does not need God 100 years to change your life. Praise God. No, you don't need you don't need a hundred years to become rich. No, we don't need a hundred years to become rich. No, you just need to understand how God turns up. You just need to understand how God can turn a thousand years. Things that men work for a thousand years, how God can cause it to happen in what? In one day. How it takes God one day to turn around things that would take men a hundred years to do. And if you know how God does that, then you can provoke God to do now what maybe he had planned to do in 15 years. That's why there's a man in the Bible when he was told you're going to die. Praise God. Put your house in order. In order. You're going to die today. The man knew how to extend his work. He knew how to extend his lifetime. He told, it all says he turned his back. And by the time he was standing again, God had told Isaiah, go tell that man I've had it in 15 more years. That man was going to die that day. But because the man knew how to turn the heart of God around, to cause God to do or not to do what God had said he will do. And that man lived for 15 more years. Why? Because he knew or he understood the law of provocation. How to provoke God not to or how to provoke God to do the things he was not prepared to do now, but he still did it anyway. Praise God. One has Amen. Yeah, so there's such a law called the law of provocation. And I'm going to show us today so that you can begin to interact with God in spaces and in places where you do things more. We do things more faster. One has Yeah. There's such a thing called the spirit of acceleration. The Bible said that the spirit of God in us is a spirit who quickens. The word quicken means that he accelerates. The word quickening means acceleration. In other words, the spirit of God who lives in you, he lives in you to accelerate. In other words, to accelerate means that to make things happen what? Faster. To make things happen faster. To make things happen faster. That's why, listen, jump in. Jesus takes water and tomorrow I'm going to talk about it. Tomorrow we're starting a segment in a, in a, in a church or, or subgroup called A Miracle Monday. And I'm going to talk about two very important things in this story. Listen, it is one thing, it was one thing for Jesus to turn water into wine. Now, but it was another thing for him to turn a one day one to taste like a what? Like a mature wine, right? You realize that his wine was so sweet, right? Wine is a sweeter to the degree of its what? Of its age. So the longer the wine lives and the sweeter it becomes. And yet this is wine that was made when? It was made today and it becomes sweeter the same hour. It's called the law of acceleration. In other words, there was something in Jesus, huh? there was something in Jesus that made this wine turn sweeter like a 1,000 year old wine. And yet it had been made right there from water into the sweetest. It's called acceleration. The spirit of God who lives in you, he is a quickening spirit. He wants to quicken things. He wants things to happen faster. So that when doctor says you will heal in two months, or you heal in one day, right? 
Yeah, if doctor says you will take one year to heal completely of this sickness, when you understand the place of the spirit of God who lives in you, it takes you one hour to heal of a thing that doctor says it will take you one year to heal. Praise God. Yeah, doctors tell you, women after they've gone for their CAs, they are told it will take you how many months? It will take you up to around three months to heal. Listen, when you understand how the Spirit of God who lives in you works, it can take you two days and you're completely what? You're completely healed. You're completely healed and you're completely delivered. It's called the Spirit of Acceleration. The Spirit of God who lives in me, the Lord says, He is a quickening spirit. He quickens us. He makes us to do things faster. You know, in the world they say, listen, in the world they say the older you grow, the weaker you are. You become. But when a man understands the place of the Spirit of God, the older you grow, the stronger. Exactly. Men who understand the life of the Spirit, the older they grow, the stronger they become. Listen, as we grow older, we're becoming more stronger. Oh, I said this before, no man in new creation reality will grow weak as they grow older. Amen. You can only grow stronger as you grow older, praise God. The Bible said that the path of the just is like a what? Shining light. The older you grow, the stronger you become. Yeah. Yeah, the older, the stronger. You remember Joseph, sorry, Joshua and Caleb at 84? Yeah, they say we are more stronger when? Now than when we were 40 years old. These men are 85 years old and they are telling God we are stronger now than we were 40 years ago. When you called us, these are men who have understood the life of the Spirit. They have understood how the Spirit of God in them quickens them to make them younger. Praise God. At 90... Rebecca was what? Sarah was what? Was more cuter than 25 year olds today. Yeah. At 90, Sarah was cuter. Today, I, let me tell you, you walk on these streets and you look at 25 years old, they are sucking faces. You guys know that, right? You are sucking faces. You look at a man and you're wondering, this is young, young. Listen, I know some of young men have grown weak and they are here in certain. I look at them and they are looking like 70 years old and yet they are younger than me. Yeah. Men are growing older in their youth on a beat, right? On a chopper, on a kwama, on a twanga, on a piala, on a pibin. <laughs> you know it's a shame let me tell you you look for me when I'm 8 I'll be looking this young I swear I promise you you go come look for me at 8 I'll be this stronger in fact I'll be more stronger I know how God keeps men praise God I know how the spirit of the Bible said this the spirit who raised Jesus Christ from the dead resides me. How can I get old when the spirit who raised God from the dead resides in me? How do you get old? How? How do you get old when the spirit of God, the spirit who raised God from the dead lives in you? You hear 30 year old, have you heard this before? 30 year old saying we are growing old. And it will go and say, and these are 25 year old talking. And it to was there. What do you mean, Mukoa? Where were you, Nani? You and who? Joppe. <laughs> you and yourself, not us. We are not growing. Hey, listen, we refuse to grow old. Amen. I say I refuse to grow old. I refuse to grow old. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. I wish you read that scripture in some. Give me that scripture in, in Psalms 90. Is it 90, right? Oh. Verses 12, 92 12. Look at what this scripture says. 92 12. It says this. It says, uh, The righteous shall do what? Come on, let's read together. The righteous shall do what? It says, The righteous shall flourish like what? Palm tree. You guys who go coast, please go study a palm tree. You'll realize palm trees don't get what? They don't get old. 
In fact, the older they get, the stronger they become, right? Yeah, the more fruit they bear in their old age. Palm tree do good when they are more aged in years. He says the righteous shall flourish like palm tree. He says he shall grow like a what? Cedar of Babylon. He says those that those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of our God. He says, look at, look at, that. Look at the following verse. Says, they shall still do what? They shall still bring they shall still bring forth fruit in what? In old age. They shall be fat. Hey! Fat! Not skinny. Not skinny. Not skinny. Not skinny. I refuse to be skinny. I refuse to be skinny. The Bible says fat. If the Bible says fat, that's what I'll become. You know fat people eat good, right? You wake up on a street and it's with the doctor saying to me, you eat what? Watch your weight, my food. Listen. What do you mean watch your weight? And the Bible says, unless the Lord watches over what? Listen, unless the Lord watches over you, listen, you can still eat crap. You can still eat good and be what? And be your best. Accept it is God who is watching over you. You can watch what manner of food you me, I eat anything. Oh, I said I eat anything and I eat in good qualities and quantities. I will never be your best. I refuse to be your best. Praise God. Yeah, but I'll be healthy. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. He says they shall they shall bring in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. Not just fat, but fat and doing good. It's not a bad thing to be fat, by the way. I say that it's not a bad thing to be fat, by the way. Praise God. I'm glad you came to church today. Yeah. It's the Bible that says that, not me. Not me. Give me Proverbs 4, 18. Look at what it says. It says this. It says, the path of the what? The path of the just is a what? The path of the just is a shining light that shineth more and more unto a what? Do you know that the sun gets brighter as the day goes? Yes. Yeah. As the day goes, the shine does what? Shines brighter. That's what this scripture means. That the sun shines brighter as the day goes. Where the sun begins in the morning, it's not as brighter as it is as it's getting in the course of the day. This is the way of the just. This is the way of the righteous. That as you're growing, you shine. I wish you could have this in, a, in Amplified or in Message. It says the, the older they grow, the stronger they become. The stronger they become. The stronger they become. Give it a, a, in, in Message. Sorry, not in our energy. What energy says the same. That's what I'm going to say. It says that the path of the, of the righteous is like, is like the morning sun. Look at that. It's like the morning sun. Shining ever brighter until the full light of the day. In other words, listen, by the time Jacob is dying, he's more. He's not dying because of sickness. It is not a sickness that kills the man, right? Yeah. The Bible said that Moses, when he was dying, his eyes were what? Were more brighter. Men at their 60s, their eyes are doing what? They, listen, I will never put on specs. Amen. Oh, I said you will never put on specs. One day you will get rid of yours. They will go, they should go, they must go. What do you mean a 20 year old with specs because they can't see good? Your vision has already been darkened in your early age. How? When I was in, admitted in high school, the first week, uh, I had, I, I, I like, I like Caesar's confidence and faith. I was, I had the weak eyes, and, and I was, I was given those things. I, I, this is the first we are once and the case in education can be bunja. The case I let it be what it will be. That's how faith works. You refuse certain things. Praise God. Yeah. You re listen. You don't admit and accept every testimonies that are given touching you. Doctors don't have the right to tell you you're sick. 
Who has the final say? God. Not doctors. They don't tell you who you are. They don't tell you who you become. Let's go back to the law of provocation. So this woman Mary knows how to provoke the son. Knows, knows how to make the son to do what he had never intended to do in that hour in time. And yet he did it anyway. Now when we talk about the law of provocation, we're talking about things uh, that either accelerate the miraculous or things uh, that are things that causes things. I taught you about the law. We've talked about the law of cause and what? The law of cause and what? The law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect states uh, that for every action there is a what? There is, for every action there is a reaction. This woman took, a, this, this was the action, came to the son and said, hey, 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 they are without wine. That is a what? That's a what? That's an action, right? To come to Jesus, to tell Jesus they, they have no wine, that is an action. Now, listen, Jesus turning water into wine is a what? Reaction. It's a reaction. He has to react according to how the woman act, acted. Jesus had to react according to how the woman, the mother, acted. Many of us don't know how to act. We don't know how to act in a manner that it will cause a reaction. We don't know. That's why nothing changes. Praise God. Yeah. That's why we get stuck. That's why it's possible you're stuck. Where you, listen, when I understood this, I stopped being stuck. You cannot understand this and still remain stuck in some place. Praise God. For every action, there is a reaction. When Jesus tells a man, go, your son is well, and the man began to walk away, when he arrived home, he calculated and discovered that the moment Jesus said, go, your son is well, it is the same hour that the son got well. Why? Because the man acted, there was a reaction on the other end. The son was getting hurt. Listen, you get, the, listen, the day, listen, the day my wife says, I'm, said, I'm done with medicine, that's the day she was healed. That's the day she was healed. Because that's how the spirit world works. The spirit world responds to men who know how to act. The spirit world knows how to respond to men who know how to act. This man, Naaman, was told, God beat yourself seven times. Praise God. The moment he acted it the seventh time, guess what? He was completely healed. His face was like a son of a wall. Like a babe who is just born right there. Because he acted. I've told you this. And I've told you, listen, let me tell you, let me deliver somebody here. I don't know what you don't eat, but this is how you're going to be delivered from whatever you don't eat. Praise God. Whatever that doctor told you you should not eat, I want you to go home today and cook it and eat it. Praise God. Amen. If it has a reaction, cook even more the following day. Praise God. And if it has a reaction, cook even more the what? The following day, I swear, by the time you do it, three days, that thing will be what? That thing will be gone. That's how I overcame what people call ulcers. And there are things I could not eat. The day I discovered this, those things that I was told I should not eat, I ate them until my my what? Until my stomach did what? Until my stomach reconciled to the mind that this thing cannot harm me. And that's how I started eating things like chevras and the pilipilis. Praise God. Let me tell you, I would eat pilipili and the diarrhea this, this next second. You know, you know what I mean? You eat pilipili and listen, I can eat it right now and leave the microphone and run. There's a way to just cause a reaction in my stomach, right? And I want to, listen, the moment, listen, I ate pilipili until it says this man has become too old, has become too tough, let's, let's leave him alone. Now I can eat shitty stuff how I want. But now I don't eat it not because if I eat it will react on me. I don't eat it just because I don't like it. But I had to put me to test to remind me that I can eat anything and nothing can harm me. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. <coughs> it's called the law of provocation. Why not secure it? Now I want to share with you five things. 
in regards to because today is a Thanksgiving Sunday. I want to share with you very five very important principles in regards to this law called the law of provocation. Number one, learn to give first. Learn to give first. When I said learn to give first, I'm saying learn to give in priority. In priority. Hello. To give first means to give in what? <coughs> in priority. In Matthew chapter 6, 33, give me that scripture. 6, 33. Look at it. This is a law. Listen. And it only works with, to men. Listen. It only works for men who know how to give first in priority. He says this. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Look at that. And seek what? And seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. Listen. The problem is many of us. Listen. The problem is many of us are, are seeking the things that are added first. We are seeking for the things that are added when we do the first things. That's why things don't work. Because you are looking for things that are added. There are things that are added to men who know how to give first. But you, you are seeking for the things that are added. He says, all these other things will be added. Listen, we don't look for the things that are added. We seek the first things. The first things. When you give first, listen, when you give first, in priority, all these things are added. Listen, I understood this. I stopped asking God for certain things. Let me tell you, can I tell you the things I don't ask God for? Yeah, I don't ask God for daily bread. I cannot wake up in the morning and tell God, give me my daily bread. I don't. Do you know why? Because daily bread are things that are what? They are added to men who seek God first. You cannot seek God first and not have what? And not have your daily bread. Isaiah reminds us that God has not called us to seek him in what? In vain. God has not called us to seek him in vain. The Bible says he is a rewarder to them that seek him diligently. Listen, the things you are looking for are given to men who know how to seek God. The things I don't ask God for. I don't. I stopped asking God for certain things. Because I know those things are given to men who seek God first. I say, listen, this is one of the things that provokes the spirit world to make things to begin to happen. Things that were meant to happen 10 years, they can begin to happen now. Because there's a man who knows how to give first in priority. Praise God. Amen. I've said this before. And listen. And learn to do it as a pattern. Make it until it becomes a pattern. Every time you give to God, don't give to God as a dog. Please, you'll understand that, right? Listen, if you read the word God in reverse, I've talked about this before, right? It means what? No. Exactly. Do you know what dogs eat? Dogs eat crumbs. Dogs eat remains. Many of us, when we give, we only give after we have done what? After we have spent everything, we give to God what has remained out of what we have. Now listen, God doesn't honor men who spent everything and give after they have spent. He can't. He doesn't. He won't. And that's why men are stuck. You're treating, you're treating God like a dog and you want him to treat you like a God. He doesn't work like that. God does not work like that. Listen, you must learn to give fast. I'm talking about F-A-S-T. In other words, every time you get anything, who comes to your mind first? God. When God is in your mind first, he puts you first. I'll say that again. When God is in your mind first, he puts you first. Yeah. How can you put God first? First in your mind and he puts you last. He's not unjust. The Bible says he is not unjust. God is not unjust. He does not know how to deal with men in unrighteousness. 
There is no way you can put God first in your mind and he puts you last. That's why scripture says we shall be first and not what? Last. Why? Because we have put God first. He says we shall be above and not beneath. Why? Because we have put God above. He says we shall be heads and not tails. Why? Because God has become our head. It's called the law of first. The law of first. First things first. First in priority. Praise God. In Malachi chapter 1, 6, let me show you what, what it means not to give God out of remains. You don't spend everything you have and then give to God outside of what has remained. Malachi 1, 6 says, he says, a, a son honors his what? That word honor means put first. When you honor a man, when you honor, honor a person, you put them what? When you honor your parents, it means you, put them, you consider them first. Before you do anything, you do what? You consider how they think. In other words, before you do something, you're consulting your father, say, Daddy, how would you have done this? That's honor. That's how you honor your father. When the Bible says, children, honor your parents, sis, listen, put your parents first. Ask your parents first their opinion. Unfortunately, we are in a generation where children do things, right, without putting their what? Their parents first. Their parents only get to see when things are backfiring, right? Your parents only got to see when things are not working. Why? Because you did not look at your mother or your father telling, Mama, I want to start this. And then you get there.